Hello guys, welcome back to your channel. This is Ojesh Agrawal and in today's video we are going to talk about what do you need to bring when you come to Australia. So I know that you have got bored listening about this same title in every YouTuber's video. So I won't take much time. I'm just trying to make this video very quick and very short. There are many students who are coming to Australia here in January or February, which is the T1 intake of this year, 2024. By the way, Happy New Year to you all and I wish you, you stay happy, healthy, wealthy and wise. So, as we know that this is a major intake and most of the students of this year will be coming in this intake. And I'm very excited to see you guys if possible here in Deakin University or in any other campus around Melbourne. Because I have no plans moving out from Melbourne for some time. So, just a quick chat about what do I need to bring when I'm coming here so first of all bring a little bit of cash with you this is because sometimes uh, when you are here and you do international transaction you might spend a lot more what I personally would recommend you is to bring at least $1,200 in cash along with it its receipt that you got it legally no matter in which city you are planning to move, Adelaide, Perth, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne. Uh, I don't know about the expensive nature of other cities, but since I know Melbourne is quite expensive, I would say and suggest that you should bring at least $1,200 in cash and you have to please, please, please be safe with it because if you lose cash, then you won't have a track of it because once you lose your cash uh, there's no traceability of it so try to bring 1200 dollars in cash but keep it with you and try to not inform or tell anyone that i'm carrying cash along with me it's kept over here don't tell about anything to anyone second thing what do you need to bring so bring all the documents that you have for example bring all your mark sheets this is what I have done. It is not a standard operating procedure or something like that. It's just to be on a safer end because I don't know when this university is going to ask me about my transcripts of bachelors or of schools or of all the certificates that I showed them. This includes all the documents that you have included in your visa process. Third thing, bring your driver's license which is driving license in India. So why I am saying that because driving license is very important over here. So for initial six months, you can drive on your international driver's license. After six years, uh, sorry, after six months, you will have to apply for Victorian driver's license if you are in Victoria, uh, if you are in Melbourne. So please, please, please bring your driver's license because if you hold a full driving license for more than three years, it's quite easy to get a Victorian driver's license when compared to getting it from scratch. Third thing, bring your COVID vaccination document. So I don't know which vaccine you took, but please do bring a copy which says that you have got all two or three doses. So get a copy of that certificate. Another thing is when you go to any of the hospitals, for uh, your health checkup while up applying for visa so i went to max hospital in delhi so they give us a certificate which says that we are fit and fine also they give us a second certificate which says something related to covid that he uh, has not been tested covid positive or something like that this is not a mandatory document to bring but i would say or i would suggest that please bring it that was just a personal ad advice it's up to you and the another thing that i would recommend you to bring is your international forex card uh, international it, your forex card so i brought the card of new global this is not a pro promotional video of any of the cards i just brought new global because it was very easy to use i loaded uh, money in rupees and i got it transferred it in dollars so the second card that you can go for, in my opinion, which I trust is EBIX card, EBIX card. And the other thing that I would really suggest you to do is try to find accommodation before you are coming here. Accommodation is really 
something which i am fo- i have tried to focus on in many of the conversations while i have been talking to many on instagram because uh, when i came to australia in november 2022 it has been more than a year now so in november 2022 the maximum pricing of a student accommodation used to be $800 a month but now scenario has been changed and the minimum the uh, this eight hundred fig- uh, dollars of figure has become the minimum amount that you pay. It's not applicable for all the regions, and it's not a SOP again. It is just my observation that I'm telling you. There are people who used to pay seven hundred dollars a month. Now they are paying more than eleven hundred dollars a month. It all depends upon where you live and whatever you want to do with your money. So just try to understand that accommodation is really something that you need to fix. So I don't know. I don't remember if I've told this or not. So for accommodation, there are some sites that you can uh, use for Deakin students. Deakin University has given a Deakin House Me site. So if you search D-E-A-K-I-N space H-O-U-S-E-M-E. And you press enter on Google, you will get a website. And once you log in with your student's ID, which they provide before you come here in Australia, log into that ID. Try to find if you find any of the rooms, any of the houses. Try to get in touch with the owners of the house. And if you need any help, I'm repeating this again. If you need any help with regard to accommodation or if you have tried to talk to someone and he's telling you okay transfer me the money and you want me to do the inspection i can do it for you just text me on instagram i am ready to help with anything because when i came to australia i literally didn't know anyone and there were people who helped me so i want to give it back and please 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 try to fix your accommodation it's really something that you need to do an advice that i would like to give with regard to accommodation is uh, if you're living, if you have a plan to live with a family or a friend of yours, try to minimize the time period that you're going to spend in their homes. And it is better always to get out of your comfort zone and discover new opportunities because you might end up getting a very good set of friends and renting your own house and then chilling. So try to ex- try to explore a lot of opportunities when you are here. The other thing that I am a little concerned about is not talking to people. So for example, it is a very good thing that people are getting connected to me and talking to me. It's not just about me. Just if you are coming for XYZ course, go on LinkedIn, go on Facebook, go on Instagram, go on any of the websites where people are active nowadays and try to search for students who are from the same course. They might guide you in any of the way possible. Because there are many international students, aspiring international students getting in touch with me. And I really appreciate that because having a right idea of what you are going to learn over here in your course is very important because otherwise you might end up leaving the course and wasting your family's money. This is this is something that you should really think of. The other thing is don't go fancy before you get rich. This is a personal opinion of mine so as soon as you land here in australia you might be offered with a lot of offers from sim companies or many things like that so just don't get attracted in at least in the initial phase because uh, you bring some money which you convert always in your head in rupees and you spend it in dollars so if you are spending uh, one unit of currency of australia it is like spending 55 units of currency of india so just keep it in mind because when i came here and i i went to get a sim plan they offered me a plan of 110 dollars a month for next three years just giving me very shitty plan but now i'm using another uh, service provider with no plan so if in the initial stage i would have agreed to that plan uh, i might still end up paying 110 dollars a month for such a shitty plan so this is something that i have faced and i'm really happy that i took a right decision the other day and it went fine so i hope you guys like this video if you have any other questions please do not hesitate to text me uh, over instagram or uh, 
just comment down below this video and i hope to see you in the next one take care bye bye good night